this, and it's like uh, some messages, transfer some messages through like different parts of the body, and also pituitary, pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is the small gland that sticks out of the brain, but it receives signals from the hypothalamus. And after that, and after that, pituitary gland release hormones that go into our bloodstream, and it talks to our adrenals. Adrenals, like as the name suggests, release adrenaline, and the adrenal, like it's just above our kidneys in our lower back, right here. You can see the location of adrenal glands like the right one, left one here. So it is like a relationship between all those glands, all those like nerves, which we call it hypo Thalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And alcohol change the relationship between them. So, like uh, our adrenaline, like it, adrenal release adrenaline, like an adrenaline and also epinephrine. Epinephrine is adrenaline, they are the same things. If we look at the biochemical cascade, like adrenaline is literally manufactured from epinephrine. They are like related together. And they are the source for all the energy, all the energetic like activities of our body. It's the source of all of them. And also our adrenals release a molecule which is called cortisol. Cortisol, like there's a misnomer here, a lot of people call it the hormone estrus, but like neuroscientists have said it's not right to call it like that. But usually people like know it as a hormone estrus. So like alcohol changes that relationship, like one of the immediate impact of alcohol, it's like people get relaxed, like they can calm down. A lot of people, they, we say people like they have a hard time, they have a discussion with someone and they say like they have a drink and after that they are like relaxed. So that's a fact. But the important point is like they become more stressful, they become more stressful when they are not drinking. Yeah, when they are drinking, like they are relaxed. But when they are not drinking because of those impacts, our adrenals release cortisol, cortisol more than usual. And the result is more stress. And we are like, makes us like so stressful. And people start to drink even more and more in order to get to the baseline when they were not drinking at all. But the point is it makes it just worse. It's not going to fix anything. So I got a question. Ask a question. So how some people get drink like the alcoholic ones and get focused? Like the Russians in Russia and get vodka and they... That's what the other like. Why people are drinking like Little by little, like they became more alert. That's that's the fact. But the point is, like after when they are not drinking anymore, that's when the problems come for us. So when they are drunk, no matter what kind of drink they use, they all get relaxed, right? They get relaxed. You know? And we are talking about the people. We are talking about the people who drink gradually. Like some people like maybe they have like a glass of wine, a glass of like alcohol only for New Year, like only like once in a while, not a lot. Maybe just two sips, three sips. But we are talking about the people who drink gradually, like maybe like every night with their dinner. Five times a week. Five times a week, like maybe like in weekends a little bit more, like it has very different patterns. But we are talking about those people, not the like 
like just you know, read a little bit, maybe just for a birthday, for a, like wedding party or things like that. So it is seldom to talk about things like that because we usually hear like people talk about immediate things of alcohol. What we talk about its effects in long time when everything gets worse. Maybe like, and one of them, like it's uh, when people during Friday became like so much energetic, they became, they become more older. It's because. There is a specific relation between like brain and body. So like we want to emphasize like when they they become more stressful when they are not drinking. Because like they say, maybe oh when we are drinking like we feel so relaxed, we feel so happy, we feel so energetic. So the point is we I'm going to emphasize again, we, people get a lot of stress when they are not drinking because like those impacts, once again, that cortisol is being released has increased a lot. So, when we start to drink, what happens in our mind? So, when we drink, there is that initially of subportion, subportion of some, some hormones. Some hormones like, uh, it also refers to cortisol. So when we drink, we start to become more alert, more energetic, and things like that. That's why uh, we start to dance. And also, there is something uh, which we call it inhibition top down. Inhibition top down for individual, like, uh, so when we when I talk about uh, inhibition top down, when we something happens to us, we want to like react immediately. For example, someone says something rude to us and uh, we get sad, we get angry, and we want to respond in a like, maybe loud way, or we want to say some rude words too, but we are supposed to control ourselves because some situation. We have to not say a bad word. We have to like keep ourselves calm. But we see a lot of people when they are drunk, like they say whatever they want, they do whatever they want. It's because of the hormone like let me check it, it's it's neurotransmitter hormone, which which is GABA. GABA like it's like uh, let's say related to that subject, like when we want to say something because of our anger, because of our emotions, but we're supposed to control ourselves because the condition, like for example, someone has a discussion with, like, uh, for example, his or her partner, but that person is supposed to control himself because, like, it's going to ruin the relationship. But when we drink, we are not able, we lose that ability, we lose the ability to control ourselves in this Conditions. We say whatever we want to say. We do whatever we want to do. So we are not able to control ourselves anymore. And we it's because GABA. We lose our consciousness, actually. Of course. Like. So. Like, for example, and also there is something uh, which we call it, which we call it like flexibility in like choices. For example, when we say, oh, like, uh, I wish I had, I have, uh, like, it was better to talk him this way, to talk with him in that way. For example, we say, oh, like, uh, maybe like my points made her or made me sad. 
we lose that flexibility aspect. So we say what we're, we want or whatever we want to do, and after that, when you are not right anymore, we say, oh, why that was not right to talk with that person like that. It was not right to do that, but it was it's too late. We can do nothing about it. And everything is because of that part. Alcohol, this part we call it prefrontal cortex. It's because like in front of our like forehead, we call it like that. It's, and it's related to our very like a specific actions. Like like for example third, like uh, yeah, like when we feel hungry, like sex drive, things like that. And it has a very deep effect in that area that we are seeing the picture. Can I add something for you in the next slide? Of course, Professor. Prefrontal cortex is growing up to age 25. So if you do something in order to damage this part, like uh, drinking alcohol or smoking, especially um, LSD or weed, you damage this part, and this part is responsible for your decision. When you destroy the decision part, uh, it means that you're going to uh, make many false decisions till the end of your life. Normally, those uh, who smoke before age 25 or who are drug addict before this age are um, more likely to be broke up, to lose their money, to decide, uh, uh, to make decision that uh, threaten their lives, uh, like as uh, having sex without any protection, or having injection without any protection, or risking on your money, or risking on your uh, life. Uh, so if you're not still 25, try to avoid the drinking and smoking, even cigarettes uh, can have damage on this uh, prefrontal lobe. And it's responsible for the decision up to the end of your life. Thank you so much for the So, impulsive behavior and other things that we talked about, it, impulsive behavior is like when we want to do something or say something, we are, we are not supposed to say that or do that for some reasons. And when we drink, immediately we there is going to be a lot of uh, cortisol, like it changed, like it impact that part, that part I showed you the previous picture. <laughs> the hormones, the relationship between those hormones change and we lose to like control of behavior and our impulsive behavior increase a lot. So, for example, we see people like the when the, when the party is going on. People usually talk so loudly, and it's not just because like there is a music playing on and they want to be heard. It's not just because of that. It's because they lose their like voice modulation. Yeah. yeah. So like they are not ever how much talking, how much loudly they are talking, and when we when they like go out for a while, they see oh like such a peaceful place, so so much noise was like at the party, yeah, so, and maybe the next day, like, they are throwing a lot, like, they are, they have, like, they're, maybe, they can't talk well, they have some problems with their talking, so they said maybe, like, they have a virus or something like that, but it's not because of that, it's because they have been shouting a lot in the party, so, or maybe, like, they start to dance a lot, they start to move a lot, like in the party. So all those things, it's because impulsive behavior. So they immediately start to do like laughing, smiling, dancing, and things like that.
And this is the point of tra tragedy, tragedy in love angle when the mother is pregnant. If uh, she drinks alcohol or if the father smokes uh, next to the mother, the child will, there is a high probability for the child to uh, born with the toxic behavior or hyperactive. Exactly, Professor. And also, they maybe get predisposition of alcoholism or being a smoker. Yeah, yes. So that's God, like what we talked talk about. So God, like a lot, like every hormone in the brain is supposed to release normally, not so loud, not so too much, more than usual. So also when a lot of GABA is being released, we are gonna have some problems again. So like every problem we get with smoking, with drinking, with being so nervous, being so angry, all those problems is because like there is no balance anymore. <clears throat> For example, hypothalamus is also like it's responsible for our biological balance about like what we perceive as stressful, what we don't perceive as stressful. So when we uh, get drink, maybe we are not like. Uh, so like what is stressful, uh, what we shouldn't consider as stressful. So things like that also happen. Yes. And uh, like in psychology and like neuroscience, it's about the behavior that you want to do immediately, like when you want to act immediately without thinking about it so much. I'm done. Thank you. Round of applause. The phrase like within my time. Like, your first phrase is like. Yeah. <laughs> so I use it a lot, Professor. I like I have worked on it, but I still I couldn't fix it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's I, I, I can really say that. Uh, yeah. On one another, you say like. But mm. each two words, one I like you insert. Like. Yeah. And sometimes it gets worse. And two likes, and after that, one word. Uh, if you can work on it, uh, you should work on it because. Uh, all is okay, and having a pet phrase like like is not okay for you. You know, um, we always have a, uh, have an example. We say that uh, if you wear bridal dress, you need to keep it clean. If you wear work dress, it's okay. It doesn't matter. It, does, okay. it doesn't matter if you uh, sink on it again. You have a bridal dress right now. So what's your suggestion for that? Do not say like, I was like, I was like. Uh, try to use another filler. Is it? Instead of? Instead of like. A little bit wider. You, you will forget it. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Round another round of applause, please. Thank you.